In my opinion, the most effective way to enjoy an awesome game with good communications is to play squad leader yourself. This might seem like a daunting task, as Hell That Loose is not the easiest game to master. For this reason I made this to the point guide with practical tips to get into it quickly. Unfortunately, your ears will get blasted by the different voice chat channels, but you will get used to this. Please note that this guide is focusing on public servers and playing with strangers, and this is the most challenging part that many players deal with. First of all, get your priorities straight. If you select a squad leader class just looking to make some kills, you will die and you will lose. Squad leaders are one of the most important classes and determine the entire outcome of a game. As repeated in most videos about Hell That Lose on YouTube, the key focus of the game is to place garrisons and outposts. Garrisons are spawn points for your team and outposts for your squad. All spawn points in Hell That Lose are created by players, except for HQ spawns. So if your team doesn't place garrisons or outposts and the enemy does, you will lose. The main focus are the garrisons, as they are more important for the team and also more difficult to place as they require supplies. Always keep an eye out on the map to see where your garrisons are and what is happening to them. Add garrisons where needed. Another important focus of squad leaders is placing resort nodes with your engineer. I'll explain more about this topic later. The next step is to break the ice with your squad. Getting your squad to communicate with you or at least listen to you is key. People in the community are always complaining about having non-responsive squads, but I don't think this is an issue for me most of the time. I'd say in about 70% of the games I play, I can find a decently communicating squad. People have different situations during which they play. Some people might be very shy, other people might be high and just trying to enjoy a game and are not that social. Other people have a sleeping family and they can't talk out loud, or some people might have a speaking disability or whatever. There are many reasons to not want to speak with strangers over the internet. So instead of whining, like many people do, give them a reason to talk to you or, or listen to you, provide them with value. When you start a game and create a squad, break the ice with some greetings and some banter. This will usually get a few people talking. I mean, everyone speaking fake German in their transport truck to the first objective will get many people hyped. Without a squad leader, your squad consists of a bunch of running headless chickens. Give them some structure by providing an objective and repeat it a few times so people will know. For the next 15 minutes, you people usually don't talk yet unless you're lucky, but just keep giving orders and call outs. Eventually, when people get invested in a match, they will start talking to you as you seem approachable and they have a reason to. And also, break the ice in command chat as well with your other squads and commander so you have an idea who's talking. And an extra tip, if you're also playing with your friends on Discord at the same time, ask them to reply in squad chat when you give them an order so that the random squad mates know there's at least some level of cooperation. Tip 3 is to get an understanding of what your team is doing. Now that you're working on building up your squad, get your bearing on what your team is doing. It would be best if your commander gives orders, but you don't always have that luxury in public servers. Open the map, look at friendly squads in the location and also potential activity. Is most of the team in the frontline meat grinder? Then set up a flank to surprise the enemy, but don't hold back in terms of size of the flank. The maps are huge and it might take some time to set up a flank, but it's worth it. You might still run into enemy squads trying to do the same, so it doesn't have to be boring at all. If too many friendly squads are flanking, you might consider moving into the front line to make sure you're not overrun. However, in practice, the situation I encounter the most is that all friendlies are running into the front line with one or two squads flanking. Most people have a tendency to just run into the meat grinder. In many cases, there are no defensive squads and this is the most important thing to focus on. Always keep an eye out if there are defenders as this is one of the most important reasons that matches are lost. Many people have the impression that defending is boring, but it's absolutely not. You will get attacked relentlessly in most of the games. Keep your communications in command chat with other squad leaders warm, as they might prove themselves useful when asking for backup if you're getting overrun. If you're not sure what other squads are doing and where you fit in in terms of usefulness, ask them. Tip 4 is to put a focus on intel for your squad and team. As a squad leader, you have extra abilities in terms of communication and spotting. You have the command channel, so you can communicate with other squads and the commander. You can place markers on the map that your squad and other squads and the commander can see. You can give orders to your squad, such as waypoints, so that they can follow them. And you have binoculars that are very useful when it comes to spotting and marking targets in the distance. Just keep using these functionalities to give your team as much intel as you can. See a tank coming through the trees, put a tank marker on the map and give you coordinates in command chat, so other squads could help you take them out. See a lot of enemy troop movements, same story. See enemy supplies coming down or an enemy bombing run coming in, warn the other squads. Always ask your squad to ping enemies with middle mouse button. This will greatly increase your squad's effectiveness. And also add your own infantry markers to the hotspots. 
Tip five is to communicate effectively. There's a lot of communication going on as a squad leader. Since you have the squad, commander and proximity chat and even maybe discord talking to you. Keep things concise and specific such as enemy infantry 256 on my ping for example. Don't use long pointless sentences. Also don't feel rejected because people don't say anything back. Most people hear what you say and listening is more important than that they speak. If you need someone to change to a certain class, let's say support, don't ask can anyone be support. Be specific in who you want to change to support and who needs to do certain things. When you make call outs, don't say here or there. People might be looking the other way and have no idea what you're talking about. Sometimes you have people in your squad that don't communicate or listen at all. In the deployment screen, you can mark your squad as mic only and you have the possibility to kick players from your squad that don't communicate at all. Tip 6 is to communicate with your commander. In most games there will be a commander. These commanders will all be different. Some don't communicate much, others micromanage more and give you direct orders. In all cases don't be afraid to communicate with them. The support class in your squad can only bring 50 supplies at a time to build constructions such as garrisons, resource nodes and bunkers. If you need more, ask your commander to drop supplies for you. You can add a marker to the map where you want them. The commander can support you with bombing runs, spawning supply trucks and a whole bunch of other things. Make use of these abilities. Give them updates on the situation on the ground as well. Are you being overrun by enemies when you're on defense? Ask for backup. Tip 7 is to micromanage your squad sometimes. Keep an eye on what classes are in your squad. In my opinion a medic class is usually not that useful as you can spawn nearby at your outposts anyway. This class also doesn't have much firepower and gets killed quickly if they try to revive someone in the open. Usually I try to have at least a communicating support and engineer in my squad. Also some classes with strong firepower and smokes are convenient. It depends on the task at hand but ask specific people to be certain roles and give them that task. It makes the objective objective more clear for them as well. You can also ask some people to flank a village while you lead the main force for example. Try keeping an eye on the map as to where your teammates are. If there are members that don't walk with your squad and try to lone wolf and get some kills, ask them to fall back or if they're playing very selfishly, use the kick functionality. Tip 8 is to manage the economy of your team. Apart from map control with garrisons and the management of your squad, there is also economy management in the game. The number of resource nodes that your team has determines the amount of resources coming in. There are three resources, manpower, munitions and fuel. The engineer class can build resource nodes that correspond with these resources. Supplies are required to build these. The further away from your HQ you build these nodes, the more resources they will generate. If you open the map, you can see the resource generation at the moment. If possible, discuss with your commander where he wants the nodes and ask for a supply drop there. Ask your engineer to build these. These resources are key to winning the game as they are required for a lot of things such as commander abilities and spawning armor. Tip 9 is to play both careful and aggressive. Playing as a squad leader means finding a balance between careful play and aggressive play. To get rid of enemy squads you can't just sit still and kill them all as you need to remove their outposts or garrison. This means getting out of hiding and pushing their stronghold with smokes or flanking them. You could feel the need to keep building outposts closer and closer to the enemy but make sure they are hidden well. Sometimes it's better to have your outposts a bit out of the way so they're harder to locate for the enemy and you have a more stable place to spawn. In general, in general, as a squad leader, you want to stick to the back a little in many situations to give proper callouts, directions and place good outposts. It's more important than getting kills. However, the squad leader's loadout is flexible with many good options, so it's definitely possible to get a good amount of kills. And the final tip is to build garrisons behind enemy lines. It's possible to build garrisons behind enemy lines. This is very useful but there are a few caveats. They cost twice the amount of supplies, 100 instead of the usual 50. This means that your support doesn't have sufficient supplies with him. This means that you either have to call in a supply drop from the commander or bring a supply truck. Both options are tricky as it might alert the enemy. Another caveat is that the garrison in enemy territory gets disabled for spawning from a larger distance than on friendly territory. To use them effectively, build them far away from enemy objectives and use them as a way to flank. Anyway, these were my squad leader tips. Did you like this video? Consider leaving a like or subscribing. Do you have any other useful tips? Please leave them in the comments. The Hell That Loose is not an easy game to learn and many people might find them worthwhile. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.